it was an interesting fellow, Richard Nielsen. His uh, uh, his before his mother and father got married, they were both Nielsen. Mm -hmm. So they didn't even have to get married; they had the same last name already. <laughs> Think of that. Give that a thought. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Sure. Yeah, give that a little thought. Okay. Yeah. Well, any yeah. other uh, recollections up till Point Barrow? What was the uh, sea conditions like during that part of the, that leg of the trip? Was it fairly normal for uh, the Gulf of the Alaska? Is almost the always ugly. <laughs> the Aleutian Islands up to Point Barrow is almost like glass. Really? Yeah. Is that normal for that oh, yeah. area? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's, yeah. It's not once you get north of the Aleutians, it tends to get yeah. calmer. Huh? Because you don't have all the tides, you know, that coming in there, you know, and creating the waves and everything. Oh, okay. That's why it does it. I see. Okay. But anyway, well, we left Point Barrow, and then proceeded going back to the ice and everything. But, Claire, before we did that, as I recall, there were a whole bunch of supply ships up there that were there to supply us yeah. before we left. Navy Not supply there. ships. They were there, there to supply the dew line sites. The I, USNS I remember seeing ship. all those gray ships. I thought they were supplying us. No, no, uh -huh. no. They were USNS and USNS ships. Right. And they're like an LST mm -hmm. landing ship tank, you know, that the Navy had. Yeah. And they were carrying a cargo to go to those dew line sites up there. Those are, uh, what were the, do, can you explain the dew line sites? The dew line like? site was an early warning system that we had in place in case Russia decided to come up over the northern North Pole sure. and attack us. Uh -huh. And they had people that would stay there year round mm -hmm. and they would monitor the airways to make sure that they did not come down. Okay. And the purpose of the whole trip was actually to find them an escape route from the ice flows on the western part of the uh, Canadian, mm -hmm. you know, that would come down and block the ships and find the escape route so they could go down on the east coast. That sure. was the object of the whole trip, uh, to get the soundings and everything. Okay. If you look at the map, if you get a map, you'll find it about the left half above Canada from Point Barrow going back is all open water going all the way to the North Pole. And as you get back in, then you hit more islands, you know, that's part of Canada mm -hmm. that we had to go through, you know, to find a way for these USNS ships to go through if they had to escape. I see. All right. Okay. So you were starting out from Point Barrow. What was the date about that time? It was July, in July sometime? I think it was July 14th, if I can recall. It's Bastille yeah. Day, of course. I think it was on or about that date. Okay. Yeah. We were given a copy of the chart. It lists each date and destination all the way through. I see. Trip. Yeah. I have I have a partial. Mine's not completed for some reason, yeah. but mine's a partial. That was made up yeah. as you as you went. Each, desti yeah. each time you hit a point, they would, would chart it and so forth. Okay. The date and time yeah. and so forth. Sure. I don't remember yeah. when we hit uh, Hudson Bay Trading Post, but that was someplace after. Yeah. That Big was Girl. further back towards Simpson Strait. Okay. Yeah. But was there a Hudson Bay Trading Post up in the Arctic? Yeah, we stopped there. Right? Yeah. We traded. No, we did. Yeah. That's why we went ashore there. Was up that near I was in Sip Churchill or someplace up in the way in the middle? It's on the about the middle on the eastern side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now so. I remember uh, uh, I was on the ship there and I got talking with Captain Wood and the executive officer Robert Phillips, and I happened to have a magazine, a maritime magazine had a story in it about the St. Roque. And the St. Roque was a Canadian vessel under command of Sergeant Larson of the Canadian Mounties. Oh. And uh, he had made the trip with a small crew in this tinky little vessel. And I believe he went from east to west. Mm -hmm. And he had, and this is about, I would estimate 53, 54 an article in this magazine, a well-done article, mm -hmm. and I remember Captain Wood was keenly interested in that. Hmm. And I myself, coming from San Francisco, at the ocean front of San Francisco, the Pacific Ocean, for years and years they had in an in a enclosure the JOA, G-J-O-A, the vessel, Norwegian vessel, under Raoul de Munson hmm. that went from east to west from 1903 to 1906. 
Okay. And it was actually two and a half years to get through. Uh -huh. And then she wound up in San Francisco, and San Francisco had it as a museum, and it was out on this enclosure. And my uncle Andrew McDonald and I, one time, and I was a kid, maybe 11 or 12, we climbed over the fence and went aboard and walked around. My uncle went to sea mm -hmm. in the deck department, uh -huh. on the, uh, mostly out of Seattle and all, because that's where he resided. And later on, uh, the vessel got to be a problem for the city, maintenance and all, mm -hmm. and right near the ocean, salt and all. So they gave it to Norway. Norway was gleeful to get the vessel, mm -hmm. and my understanding is that to this day, it is someplace in Norway, oh. in honor of Roald Amundsen. Sure. I might add that Roald Amundsen is a very famous explorer, mm -hmm. and I think he visited the South Pole, the North Pole, the South Pole, and he lost his life circa 1926. There was an Italian who uh, tried to cross the pole and all in a, in a blimp or dirigible, if you will, mm -hmm. and rolled a month and went out, here. went out looking for him. Mm -hmm. And he lost his life in the search for the Italian. And they found the Italian, but poor Roald Amundsen was killed. Very, sure. very uh, noble Arctic explorer. Okay, sure. Well, uh, you want to continue on with, uh, from uh, Point Barrel? Point, Point Barrel, I know there's two instances I remember. Mm -hmm. As we went back, I know we got Cape Perry. For some reason, the three COs from the three ships and the two Canadian officers flew over to Cape Perry. Uh -huh. And I know on a return trip, they were coming back about 2 o'clock in the morning, between 1 and 2 in the morning. Sure. And... Huh? Oh, really? It was daylight? It was point. daylight. Yeah. The sun, when it came down, it just mm -hmm. never did set. You didn't see it set. And uh, I know that... Uh, the JG, he flew one back, the chief flew one back, then he went back to get two more. And on the return, the JG landed on the stern mm -hmm. and let the officer out and everything, and the chief was coming back getting ready to land. And one of the guys, they have straps that they put on the helicopter to lock it down so it won't go anywhere. Uh -huh. They released all the straps except one, and they didn't release the one that was on the starboard side back there, and he put full power on the helicopter, and when it did, it just toppled right over the side of the ship. Wow. Broke the strap and everything, went into the water. The JG got out of the helicopter to get free of it and everything, and the uh, chief, who was in the other plane, helicopter Hoover down and put his pontoons on the water so that the JG could ha hang on to him until we could get the lifeboat off of the ship and over to him to get him up in the water. And as soon as they got the boat off and got him in the lifeboat, then the other chief brought the helicopter up, let his passenger off and went back to get RCO who was the last one coming back. Mm -hmm. Of course, he didn't know all this had happened. Yeah. And of course, he came back, and here was the uh, helicopter then crashed, and we maneuvered the boat around, you know, where we could use the boom to bring it up on it. And to me, I always liked the expression as one of those Bell helicopters. Right. And uh, his helicopter looked like a mosquito where you just slapped it like that. You know, it was really smashed up. Uh -huh. Of course, they put it up on the uh, well deck and everything. So when we got that, I know they took and sent a message that one of the helicopters had crashed. Mm -hmm. And so they decided, well, we're going to need another helicopter. So they sent a message out. The Burton Island was somewhere around Point Barrel. And uh, we was wanting to send the other helicopter up because without the two of them, you know, we didn't want to lose the second one, you know, because of engine failure and not be able to get the people back. So that was when we got stuck in the ice. 
and the ice flow from the north came down and took the ship and raised it about a foot out of the water. Uh, we could not go forward, backwards, sideways, anywhere. Hmm. And it kind of tilted the ship a little bit. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the bramble was close to us and was pushed up against the stores. And we sat there for about two days. And during that time, we sent the message for the Burton Island. They figured, well, we'll get the Burton Island in there, you know, and they might be able to break us out, but I